So then gang, now we've registered the service worker with the browser, that's the first step done. The next step is that the browser then emits an install event automatically while the service worker is being installed. So we can listen to that install event inside the service worker and then we can do something when that happens and that's what we're going to do now. Okay then, so currently we're registering this service worker right here, forward slash sw.js, and that service worker sits in the root of our project directory, giving it the scope of the entire project. Now, we register this from app.js, but what we want to do now is listen for when the install event occurs, i.e. when the service worker gets installed to the browser. Now, we do that from the service worker file itself, and we do it by adding an event listener to the service worker to listen for that install event. So what we say is self and self inside a service worker refers to the service worker itself. Then we add an event listener to that and we wanna to listen to the install event. Now when this occurs, it's gonna fire a callback function. And this callback function takes as a parameter an event object which represents the install event. Now, because there's only one parameter, I'm going to get rid of these dudes because we don't need the parentheses with just one parameter. And then inside, all I'm going to do for now is console.log and we'll say service worker has been installed. Okay, so all we are doing is listening for this install event on the service worker and then firing a callback function when this occurs. So let me save this now and head over to the browser. Now we can see, first of all, service worker registered. That's from app.js that we do this, and we say service worker registered. But also now we see service worker has been installed as well. So we can see that the service worker has been installed. We can see one right here. Now what happens if we just refresh the page? Well, we get service worker registered, but we don't see service worker installed again. And remember, that's because a service worker is already installed to the browser. It's not changed since the last time that we loaded the page. So therefore, it doesn't get reinstalled. It doesn't need to be. But if we change this file, and all I'm going to do is take away that comment at the top, then save it and head back over to the browser, then we can see that the service worker has been installed again. Because the file has changed, it needs to be reinstalled to the browser. That makes sense, right? But if we go over to the application tab, we can see that it's not yet active. It's waiting to activate. Okay, so like I said, when a service worker is installed, it doesn't automatically activate. It remains in waiting until we close down all of the tabs and then reopen the application. So it's installed, but it's not yet active. So we have our service worker being registered by app.js now. And then when that happens, the service worker is installed and we listen for that install event and react to it, right? But what else would we want to do inside this function right here? Because at the minute, all we're doing is logging this to the console. Why would we use this? Well, we could use it later to add assets to the cache so that a user can still see those assets in offline mode. And those assets would be common assets to the site. Things that don't change much like the main CSS file or the logo or the index page, that kind of thing. And we'll talk much more about the cache in offline mode later on and fill this out then. For now, I want to move on to the next part of the service worker lifecycle, which is when the service worker is actually activated in the browser. 